hypothesis. So how does it work? It works by pretty much the same idea as we used in the first, uh, maybe the second lecture, we used the Fourier analysis. We used the Fourier analysis on a differential equation, on the partial differential equation. Here, we use the discrete version of the Fourier series, the discrete Fourier series. Instead of applying it on the differential operator, we apply it on the discrete finite difference operator. So the idea idea is expand uh, it doesn't matter here either ui or ei with discrete Fourier series right I just going to write it as DFS and um, and substitute into the finite difference operator. Okay, let's see in this case how it works. Okay, let's pick a UI hat as an example. So UI hat, if I expand it using a discrete Fourier series, I have another summation over k, but instead of k goes from minus infinity to infinity. Now k is going to be summed over a finite range. Okay, the finite range I'm going to be summing over is instead of minus infinity, I'll write minus n over 2 and uh, 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 n over 2 minus 1. So where n is the number of grid points in a periodic domain. Okay. So the summation over k, k is the same as in the previous case. But then I have a u uh, to distinguish from the, the, the spatial grid point. Let me write k as a superscript. So, so u superscript k is the, uh, is the coefficient of the kth Fourier mode. And then I have e to the uh, j, which is the imaginary number here, times i times k. Okay, here I'm assuming the periodic domain is 0 to 2 pi. So that makes the e to the j i k to be going from, uh, uh, to, to be a complete sine series if k is equal to 1 or minus 1, right? All right, so that's my discrete Fourier series. Now, how does this series work when I substitute into a finite difference operator? So let's take a look. So let's substitute what, uh, let's take a look at what is ui plus one plus ui minus one minus two times ui divided by delta x squared look like if I substitute the Fourier series, the discrete Fourier series, into each of these three variables. Okay, so that is going to be equal to, I can pull this summation over k out of everything, right? Okay, and then I have a uh, over delta x squared, and then the u to the k is actually common in all the three terms. The only thing different between these three terms are i, right, which are only appearing here. So what I have is e to the j i plus 1 k plus e to the j i minus 1 k minus 2 times e j i k, right? Okay, so let's continue. So the summation stays the same, uk stays the same, and an exponential of the summation of two things can be written as the product of the exponential with respect to the individual terms. So another common term I can pull out is actually e to the jik, because the first term can be written as 
e to the jik times e to the jk, right? The second term can be written as e to the jik times e to the minus jk. And the third term is just a 2 times e to the jik. Yes? Yes? Why, why are we able to look at R from X as the application from X and other? Uh, so, yeah, so he, the J, oh, so here, sorry, so the J is, uh, J is a square root of minus 1 here. Sorry, we are looking at a one dimensional equation here. There is only I, so, so J here is the imaginary number that you have to use if you use the complex version of the Fourier series. All right. Okay. Right. So what is, e, I mean, with that definition of j, what is uh, e to the jk plus e to the minus jk? It's two times cosine, right? The imaginary parts cancel out. So what we have is summation u to the u to the k, e to the j i k, which uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about later. Uh, so so let's uh, let's let's put this out. So this is two times cosine, uh, two times cosine k, right? minus 1 divided by delta x square. All right. Yes? Uh, DDT? So, sorry, wait, which are you pointing at? Uh, so on the left hand side, it is derivative with respect to t because in the beginning we have a differential equation. Uh, sorry, all of these are derived from the differential equation from the heat equation, which is du over, I mean partial u partial t is equal to kappa times partial square u partial x square, right? So we are looking at this heat equation. Uh, in the last lecture uh, and in this lecture so far. And uh, we are taking the approach where we first discretize space without considering discretization in time yet. Right, so after discretization in space, we derive this finite difference equation, which is this one. And then we are trying to look at, is this equation, is this discretization stable? Is the error introduced by the finite difference operator going to amplify or they are not? So we have come to this point where the finite difference operator operated on the discrete Fourier series is going to be like that. Okay. All right. So the volumen stability analysis take this view and analyze each Fourier component individually. So it asks the question that if I have a initial error or if I have a contribution of the error from a particular time step that can be decomposed into the discrete Fourier series how does the contribution of each Fourier term grow or decay as a function of time so what it tries to ask is that okay so looking at this equation let's say if I can expand this contribution term in terms of Fourier series and look at them individually using the principle of superposition. So let's say I have an infinitesimal, a very small error added with respect to one particular k component. Is that component going to decay or grow? So to look at that, we can think of the u hat only have one particular component, right? So if u hat only have one particular component, then the u of superscript k is going to be zero except for one particular k. Okay, and if that is the case, so in particular, if 
only u of a particular k is non-zero, then what we can say from this analysis is that ui plus 1 plus ui minus 1 minus 2 times ui hat divided by delta x square is actually equal to then this is actually uh, ui because u superscript k times e to the jik looking from here is actually u hat of i. Right? So so thinking of only one of u hat of k being non-zero is basically taking away this summation. We don't need this summation anymore because we only have one term being non-zero. Right? If we don't have this summation, then u hat of i is just uh, uh, this. Okay, we also need to multiply by 2 times uh, cosine k minus 1 divided by delta x square so what this means is that if you apply this finite difference operator to a sinusoidal function what you get is the same function multiplied by a factor which is 2 times cosine k minus 1 divided by delta x square and our stability is going to be inferred from this factor right okay so first of all let's say i have this factor for for the factor is different for every different k right for k equal to zero this factor naturally is going to be equal to zero because for a constant term no matter if i use the original differential equation or use this finite difference operator i'm going to get a constant solution there is no decay no grow no growth uh, for the constant solution right and for all k's that are non-zero what what is this factor look like is it real or imaginary or positive or negative it's gonna be negative right it's gonna be negative which means if I can solve the ODE if I can solve this resulting ODE exactly my error is going to decay exponentially right and again if i can solve this ode exactly then the higher the wave number the higher uh, k is the faster the error decays which is a uh, great news